First, it's important to note that Scala 3 has three main pages, the Browse page, the Create page, and the Arrange page. In this video, we'll focus on the Browse page and the Arrange page, but we'll take a look at the Create page in some detail in a future video. So one of the first things you might want to do in Scala 3 is to start making some sound, and you can do that simply by clicking on the keyboard at the bottom of the screen. Or if you have an attached MIDI controller, you can use that to make some sound. Currently, what we're hearing is the default felt piano sound, which is one of Scalar 3's internal sounds. To change the sound, just click on the name of the instrument. And you can then browse for a different internal sound, of which there are many to choose from. Or you can use the third party plugin. I'm going to search for Aturia's Piano V3. In addition to playing individual notes, you can also play pre made chords. And this is probably what you'll be doing far more often. There are many, many chords included with Scalar 3, but you can of course modify these or even make your own chords. One way to find some chords is to first choose a scale. So let's choose the C major scale. Across the middle of the screen in section B, we can see the C major scale's seven diatonic chords. So there's a chord here for each note of the C major scale, and these chords are all built of notes entirely from the C major scale. These are all basic triad chords, so chords made of three notes, and you can see these notes being displayed in the keyboard at the bottom of the screen. If we'd like these chords to sound a bit more interesting, we can choose a different voicing from the voicings menu. Here we can choose variations of the chords, such as sevenths or ninths. Or we can simply choose different voicings, which generally just rearrange the existing three notes. You can hear these immediately sound much richer and fuller. Now all we have to do to start building our own chord progression is to drag the chords we like down into section C onto the main track. And let's have a listen to how that sounds. But if you'd like a little more assistance, or maybe you're in a bit of a hurry, there are many other ways to find chords aside from just browsing scales. At the top of the screen in section A, we can see several different categories, each containing a pre-made chord progression. Alternatively, at the top of the screen, we have some pre-made common progressions, which are tried and tested chord progressions, great for a variety of different styles. For example, 1-4-1-5. One, one, or 1-4-5-1. One, one. And each of these common progressions includes various voicing variations, such as thickened, or coloured. Let's try something a bit different and look at 1454. Four. Maybe we'll try the coloured 2 option. I like the way that sounds, so let's remove our existing chords from section C and then select these chords from section A, and I'm going to right click and choose add to main track. Okay, this is sounding good. However, it would be nice to perform these chords in a slightly more musical or expressive way. To do that, we can activate a motion by clicking the enable button in the bottom left. Let's listen to the default motion. It's nice, but not quite what I'm after. So let's open the motion browser by clicking on the name of this motion. Here we can see all the different motions across different categories. Expressions tend to be the more complex motions. These quite often add additional notes or colors to the chords. We can preview any of them by clicking and holding the illustration of the motion. I 
I think for this song, I'm going to choose something slightly more simple. So let's head to articulations and look at passages. Passages are more subtle piano style embellishments, just to add a little more flavor to the chord progression. Okay, I quite like this one, passage three. To select, we just click on the name of the motion. Let's hear how our song's sounding now. Okay, this is coming along well. Once we have the basic chord progression down and we want to start customizing things a bit more, we can head to the arrange page. From here, we can do all sorts of things, such as choosing a different instrument sound, adjusting the volume, pans, solos, and mutes. And we can also add multiple third-party effect plugins. But let's concentrate on the chord progression for the moment. Right now, each of our chords is just playing for one bar, which is quite simple. But to change the duration of any chord, all we have to do is click and drag to extend the length of a chord. Currently, you can see I'm changing this chord length in increments of one bar. That's because my division setting is set to one bar. To make finer adjustments, we can choose a smaller division, such as one quarter. So let's make some of our chords a bit shorter, and some a bit longer. Now let's try adding some additional tracks to our song. One of the great things about Scalar 3 is that every additional track we add is automatically going to play in tune with our main track chords. To add a new track, we click the plus sign in the top left. This again opens the motion browser, but this time, whenever we select a motion, it's gonna create a new track based on that motion type. Let's choose a simple arpeggio pattern. This one sounds nice. Now let's choose more of a synthesizer type sound to play this arpeggio. I'm gonna choose one of Scalar 3's internal sounds called Heavy Hitter. I might just turn down my piano track a little bit. That's sounding nice, but I wouldn't mind refining that synthesizer sound a little bit. To help me with this, first I'll solo the arpeggio track, and then I'll turn on loop mode. Now Scalar 3 will just loop these four bars over and over again. So let's open the arpeggio sound editor, and I'll just tweak this amplifier envelope shape to give the sound more of a plucky characteristic. I might also back off the filter setting to make it sound a bit darker. And add some delay to give it a more interesting rhythm. Okay, that's sounding good. Let's hear how that sounds with the piano. Okay, now let's look at the actual notes of the arpeggio pattern. So let's move from the mixer to the MIDI editor. Here in the MIDI editor, we can see all the individual notes that our arpeggio is playing. You may notice that subtly layered behind those notes are the notes from our main track chords. This is helpful so we can see how all our different track notes relate to each other, but if you find that distracting, you can turn it off by clicking the keyboard icon in the top right. Let's leave it on for the moment. So while it is possible to move individual notes around in our arpeggio pattern here, if we do so, it will actually detach this MIDI clip from the main track, which means it would no longer automatically update if we changed our main track chords. If we'd rather keep this MIDI clip attached to our main track, we can instead use the modifier controls in the sidebar. For example, we can transpose all the notes up an octave, But that sounds a little bit too high pitched, 
So instead, I'm going to invert the notes up one step. This just transposes all of our notes up one increment, but making sure it doesn't add any additional notes that weren't there before. So it should just sound slightly higher pitched. There's another control further down called density, which we can use to either add additional notes or remove notes from this pattern. Let's try reducing the density to remove some notes. Okay, that's sounding good. Now that we have two tracks playing together, let's add a third track. This time, I'm gonna choose a chord follow track. This is a very simple track which just plays the same chords as our main track without any sort of articulation added. We can use this to double our main track chords using a different instrument sound. So let's swap out that default felt piano for more of a synth pad sound. I might open this track's sound editor and back off the filter cutoff frequency to make it a bit more subtle. I also feel like our arpeggio sound is getting a little bit lost in the mix, so let's add a third party effect plugin to make it stand out a bit more. Okay, now that we have three tracks all planned together, let's add one more track. This time, I'm going to choose a bass motion. There are some nice high energy motions in the sidechain category. Let's try this one. And I'm going to replace that piano sound with a synth bass sound. Now I might extend my song a little bit beyond just these four bars. So I'll select all of my main track chords, and I can copy these chords by clicking and dragging whilst holding Option on my keyboard. Now let's click and drag to select all of our motion clips, and then extend their lengths to cover these new chords. I'll also extend my loop region to cover these eight chords now. But instead of just repeating those same four chords as before, I might replace some of them with some new chords. So let's head back to the Browse page, and maybe grab some of the chords from this C major scale. Let's replace this G minor with an A minor, and replace my F major 7 with a G major. And if we head back to the Arrange page now, what we'll notice is that all of our motion tracks have updated what they're playing to reflect our new chord progression. 